Greetings to you one and all, whenever and wherever you may be viewing, and welcome once again to this episode of Bayou Gold Guy. I am Bayou Gold Guy, and as you can see, we have the full-blown spring day going on down here on the bayou, and uh, as we uh, enter the the last a uh, little over a week of March, and we are we are basically in full spring mode right now. But I'll tell you, one thing I miss down here is not having the, the Texas wildflowers. Louisiana, that at least the southern the southern parts of Louisiana, don't have anything like the, the fields of uh, blue bonnets and Indian paintbrushes that would pop in the spring along the Texas roadsides. One of the most beautiful drives anywhere is, uh, the, there's two of them, well, the run between uh, Waco and Dallas along I-35, and then the uh, cut between San Antonio and Houston on I-10, uh, where you would just have literally acres and acres of of blue bonnets that would be growing, you know, four feet, four foot tall plants with blooms this big, just uh, like I said, just beautiful. And there was one year where we had a drought, and I had been trying to grow them and and around the house because they're they're notoriously hard to domesticate. And I'd gotten a few packages of, of seeds, which look like basically look like little rocks, so that they blend in, because they'll sit sometimes for years in the waiting for the right conditions to uh, germinate and sprout. And that way, they're not not they're not uh, predated by birds or uh, bugs and things. Very hard. They're very as hard as a rock too. They're very very interesting plant. When they got the little pods, when they're ready, they they pop and they fling seeds out. Sometimes three or four feet. From the plant, and I know this because I was sitting on. I had them. I actually had them year after year, from the flower bed to where they would pop and spread them to the yard. Where one there was one year in Texas where my front yard was basically the only spot in the in the metroplex area that had this. You know, it was wall to wall blue bonnets, huge things, and people would stop by and knock at my door asking if they could take pictures because that's what they do. You'd go out as, as kids. We would do that. They parents would take us out. We'd go out into these fields and they take pictures of us among the blue bonnets and it was against the law to, you know, the state flower. It was against the law to pick them, but we'd always bring back, you know, a little bit to put in a vase, you know, so yes, they were, they were, uh, we were lawbreakers from the start with our, our, our blue bonnet theft. But again, it was just, uh, but yeah, I'm sitting on my, on my porch, uh, front porch and I something flicks and hits me in the face. I'm like, what the hell was that? Cause I mean, it was kind of hit hard enough. You feel it. And I'm sitting there, and uh, and uh, a little bit, long, a little more time passes, and I hear, I see, hear, see the motion of something else again, and then I start examining. I realize that these seed pods, as the flowers die off and leave the dried pod, the more they dry up, they get under tension because they were curved, and that curve would put a bow in them, so they would reach a point where they would dry up to the point where they would finally spring open and fling the seeds out. So that's how they, you know, propagate and uh, disperse. So I, th I thought that was just very awesome uh, to, 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 to get that field uh, experience in the front yard. But literally, uh, th that was uh, that year they, they had a drought. They weren't growing on the normal places along the, the corridors in Dallas where they'd grow. So that was very awesome. And I came down here. I brought, I had a bag because I'd collect them at the end of every season because that, that my yard got more and more of them for the last year that I, before I came down here in 2006, uh, they were, they had had, I'd had, you know, the most full they'd ever been. And uh, uh, so, yeah, they, uh, now they, 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 they've been mowed down and never, uh, you know, they, have, they don't, they don't exist there anymore. But, uh, but yeah, so I brought a bag that was this big of a gallon Ziploc bag down here and was trying to Johnny Appleseed those things all over the place. And, uh, I had one spot in a, in, a, in a customer's yard where I was doing beds and I tried to start some and they had little plants, spindly plants and little spindly buds and they just didn't make it. So yeah, they were not, they're not designed for here. They're designed for Texas. I don't know where else, anywhere else in the country that they actually grow except in Texas. So that is the state flower. But like I said, I, I really miss that this time of year to have those fields and then the Indian paintbrushes with the uh, contrasting almost a magenta red color that would be... Uh, and, and yellow and white tips on them, depending on them, uh, it would grow amongst the blue bonnets. So you'd have this, this these vibrant blues and the reds. Like I said, it was just uh, just awesome. Then you'd have the occasional, you know, little flower that would pop up that would have your, where you'd throw in a little, I can reach down there, throw in a little bit of yellow. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, it was always cool. But 
At any rate, though, we have us a beautiful, a beautiful spring going on here, and um, I've got some awesome paint. I'm, uh, you all might notice I didn't have a, a, a uh, grill on the bayou video last week for the weekend. I come down with some kind of stomach shit after uh, just pure nausea for a couple of days this weekend, going into the first of this week, and uh, I didn't go to the parade. I, I missed going to the, the St. Patrick's Day parade. My buddy went, actually got a pineapple for the first time, along with the usual piles of goods and stuff, so that was cool for him, but uh, yeah, I still, I just wasn't, wasn't feeling it, so, and uh, been, now we had the rain this week, and this is basically Friday afternoon, trying to see if I can get this done, because I just feel like I'm slacking off if I don't have, I kind of resolved I wasn't going to do anything this week on it, but uh, we're going to see. It may be premiering at regular time, maybe midnight special or coming up the next week. Who knows at this point? But at any rate, I've got something that came in from uh, the awesome Gold Nugget Sales. Uh, Mike sent this as a as just a thank you, and he's a, he's a generous guy. And uh, I've seen a couple of these on other uh, videos that have already been out. I think Miller had done one on them too, but this is my first time doing it. I have had this stuff before. It is awesome, and it was in a different bag, of course, uh, from a different place. But let's uh, get into it. We'll turn to the new gold epicenter of South Louisiana. Where, yeah, I don't have my board out today. But X still marks the spot for the rare and still as yet unavailable crystallized gold pay dirt. This is his uh, French Gulch, Breckenridge, Colorado. And uh, you can see there that is one of the old, the old style dredges where they'd plop it down up in the mountains. That was one of the cooler, cooler the episodes I remember watching from back when I'd watch Gold Rush and stuff was uh, whatever that guy, Tony, the, what the hell was that? The, he was the, the Swede or the Norwegian, whatever that guy is. But, uh, but yeah, he written recovered paid a million dollars or something on that dredge that was in the middle of nowhere re trying to <laughs> get it going uh, i don't remember what I ever happened with that but it was cool that this giant huge piece of equipment was just left in the alaskan uh you know hillsides mountainsides from the the past but but yeah this is the you can see on the back there always appreciate you by you crystallized uh, fine gold and wire gold. So he did his crystallized gold before that he'd had a bag of a couple of years ago that had some very unique, uh, got a video on that. I'll leave a link to that on the, at the end of this video, but, uh, it had some of the coolest wire gold in it. Even the, I, I, you know, I've always been a wire gold fan from the first time I ordered that, that real fine wire gold from uh, gold Bay that they used to sell. But, uh, but yeah, this stuff that he had with that particular crystallized gold was very, wire gold was very, uh, you know, much, much larger scale where you could see it a lot easier without a, a loop or having to zoom in on your camera, although that is still always the best way, like I said, to do that stuff is to use your, your zoom and position it on your table and just check out your gold without having to deal with a loop. Let me turn off that light so we lose our reflection, but... So yeah, very cool bag, and you can see it is a, it's it's just taped on, it's not actually a label, it's got the, looks like it's got the, the oh, it's okay, it's tape, I thought it was maybe that, that stick em goose stuff, but at any rate, we're going to probably pull that off, and we'll add it to the, uh, the painter, the sticker board, once I get some additional, uh, that I got to expand it, because it is full, so, uh, yeah, so let's get some water set up, and we're going to go through this and see if see if I can recover. This is a one-gram bag, and he is working on putting something on this together for his, uh, you know, for his website to sell from the company, but he's got to deal with the, not just the gold, but getting the dirt and keeping it affordable and having access to it. And uh, he's got some pay dirts right now that he's working on, he said, but he's got, he's got to have the... The, the the dirt is still drying out. The material is still drying out from the, you know, from winter. So, and up there in Washington, in Oregon, I would guess that it probably, you know, and you're in a temperate rainforest, so that could be problematic any time of year. But the very very awesome uh, uh, again of Mike to to share this with us, and uh, again he's a, just a generous guy, and I really appreciate him, and and appreciate that he offers us something that. You can't get anywhere else in any other gold companies. So, 
Well, let's get set up and we're going to roll with this. All right, well, let's go ahead and we'll get this opened up. We're going to keep America great. Yeah, nice little slice on that. Actually, I need to, my knife's getting a little dull there. So there we go. This is, again, it's some dusty... Dusty dirt there. That is some Breckenridge material from uh, Colorado. So the French Gulch. Let's see. I'm thinking since we're dealing with fine, fine and wire gold, that we're going to definitely want to. Oh, first, we're going to want to dry that off. It literally just a, a few hours ago it was torrential thunderstorms and downpour out here and we've already like i said you've seen what it what it's become so yeah we definitely want to separate out this stuff and it looks like we're going to have some a little bit of dirt clods to break down as usual you can see there's a there's some organics this is uh stuff has not been washed it is some genuine genuine pay dirt from the mining country anything wet on the bottom there still got a little bit falling through on that so so there is our less than and our plus, we got a couple of a couple of Rockies in there too with it. And I'm already seeing. Let's see if the camera will zoom in on that. Right there, I'm pretty sure that is a that is our first. Where'd it go? Where'd you go? Damn it! When you're zoomed in, you can't find either. There we go. That is our first piece. Let's see. How does it does it look? How does it look in the sun? Where I can't see anything in the in the lens. Well, I can tell we see that shining in the sun. Can I pick it? Yes, I can. <laughs> it's a it's a delicate it's a delicate pick, but it is a pick. Very nice. Looks like a looks like a uh, a, a bird with its wing in the air, or maybe a a, a a dove, moth. What do you see there? I know Mr. Minix will be one of the first to say I see, but uh, a nice. Like I said, that is some crystallized, crystallized gold. Beautiful stuff. But yeah, I just can't, I can't do that in the, in the light. It blinds me. All right, well, we'll go ahead and hit this stuff first, get through the, the easy part relatively speaking so yeah it's been pretty actually it's been a pretty sad week around the, the bayou house because I've had uh, my little girl's kittens I've lost two of them this week the two the two that seemed you know just fine the little orange one and the little tan one the orange one went first, and uh, the next day I lost the the little pancake one, and uh, and now I'm down to bottle feeding the last little. Uh, I think I think it's a, a little. She's a little calico like her mom. It's uh, she's got the little light marks on her on her belly there, but I just can't get her to to take the the bottle. I'm just putting in drips at a time in her mouth and. You got to make sure that they don't 
breathe it because then you asphyxiate them or, uh, you know, that's, uh, or shoot it, they can shoot it up their nose. It's, but she's just not, not putting on weight. And it's, and was, she seemed to have been, been eating and her, her little, her little sister there, her big sister, the, the other, uh, she's going to be a calico is, uh, you know, doing, you know, she eats all the time. So, so I know Jesse's putting out milk, the mama, but, uh, it's just, uh, it's a, I'm fighting a losing battle trying to, trying to keep this little thing alive. But, I, uh, but yeah, digging, digging, having to keep digging little graves over there in our, our little baby graveyard I have going in the back. That sure, <laughs> That sure seems like something because it is not moving, but I just, could that, does it break? Does it bend? It cr kind of crumbled there as it broke, but it didn't. I'm not sure what that is. It was holding with the gold, though, but it seems to be very, uh, it seems to be almost like a sandstone quality to it. We're, we'll have to examine that closer when we get done, because I'm, I'm not going to, I'm definitely not going to leave it behind. But check that out, our first piece of that crystallized and look at that i mean that's a that's a big piece of wire gold right there i mean that's that's a big wire in my in my way of thinking along with these other crystals but i mean that i said that it didn't bend it kind of crumbled to some degree but that that looks like the rest of that it gold so i mean damn i've uh that's odd i've never uh never seen that I mean, after after almost three years, I'm definitely not new to it anymore. So, but that's cool that you always got you always have something new coming up to say. What the what the hell is that? <laughs> that uh, you're just not going to get that from from most any pay dirt company. I said, that makes for an interesting bag when you got something like that. You're going, well, what the hell is that? <laughs> it's, it's, it, sure, it sure seemed to be acting like gold there, but it did not feel like it the way it broke apart. But so, yeah, I've got a, like I said, I'm working to try to keep that little one alive and mix up formula and feed it i mean it, every it just drop by drop so it takes a while every time you try to try to get it to eat but like I said, it's just it's hard for me to lose any of them i i, I, I don't like that <laughs> gizmo he'll obviously they're feeding him and he'll have him up and sniff it and sniff his little nose there and because again, he he thinks they're all part of his part of his clan. Because all those babies were born after he arrived, so they grew up with him and he with them. So you see these, this, especially Snowball, that giant white panther, just manhandling this little Chihuahua. It's the funniest damn thing. But there, you know, there's never any aggression. It's always just play, you know. The only one that's aggressive is Angel. Is uh, yeah, Angel. He's gotten so. See, look at that one. That's got a a gold one. It looks very golden on one side, and then a rocky piece on the other, like a like a coating almost. See, if you look at that right there, you think that looks like a piece of gold, and then you roll it. what the fuck <laughs> so I'm gonna compare it gold to gold 
And I guess side by side, it does, I mean, but you got to remember that crystallized gold, that, that wire gold there has a very, is a very buttery, polished look to it compared to that piece. And it did not, and again, it held, it held with the other stuff longer. It did not, it does not, it's not washing away, so it would suggest that it does have a little higher, a little bit higher density. Even though for a thin piece of gold, like a layer of gold leaf is almost what it looks like on it. But it washed away, so. And there's our next next three pieces you can see that one's got some of that rusting discoloration on it there that that stuff gets sometimes it's kind of uh, it's kind of hiding the the crystallized con uh, character on it because it's got those kind of loops there now that side you can see a little better detail of what that's the black kind of sets off the pattern But, like I said, that is uh, some unique stuff. Very cool. Y'all may notice it sounds a little different. I don't have my, I did not trust the mic today. I couldn't tell that it was charged. And I didn't have time to jack with it. I had to get out and get something going if I was going to. So, again, man, I just... We're going to throw that in the bottle for later. <laughs> I've never had so much uh, questionable stuff. I'm going, okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll revisit that. We'll circle back on that. Also, you might notice I sound a little different. I've, I actually have a doctor now that I went and, uh, from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, actually my, my landlord, who's also a doctor set me up with this guy and, uh, really really nice guy and first thing he's like you know that that rescue inhaler you've been using is not is not for daily use <laughs> you need a i'm gonna put you on this and this it's uh this it's an inhaler that's that's for you know use it twice a day and then you have the rescue inhaler for uh uh emergencies or when you know when you feel when you when you need it like when you can't breathe when you have like that that weight in the chest whatever but uh but yeah ever since he started since he's prescribed those and i've been using this other one twice a day it's uh i haven't had to use the rescuer at all i use these and i, I immediately lost that that was still a constant even using the rescue inhaler you still had that constant kind of pressure you know blocking your good breath at, to some degree most of the time maybe except for right after using the the rescue inhaler and then it would come back, but uh, but yeah, with this stuff now it's uh, like I said, it's very, very different, and I am very grateful that this guy was uh, uh, you know, gave me the gave me the right stuff I should be taking, <laughs> and and then uh, and then while I'm while I'm talking to him in his office, first thing he's uh. Because my landlord, let's see, that's hanging up there. I thought that might be some gold in that. But my landlord, I guess, had told him that I, you know, that I do the, look at that beautiful piece of wire. The remodel construction work that I do. And literally he had me come to his house that night, <laughs> that afternoon when he got off to uh, look at some stuff he wanted done. So that's cool. But check that out. Is that not a not an awesome little piece of <laughs> wire? Look how it, uh, it has almost like the ribbon twist at the top. That is just, I mean, that's what makes that just uh, stuff just so incredible. And you can just picture it seeping through, a, you know, some kind of tiny little fissure in the rock as it's molten and then that little fine little fine where the tip where it ends or you know breaks off and then uh hardens up and, and and is left for eternity like that 
that's just uh that's just awesome <laughs> beautiful stuff so that wraps up our our big stuff so we're going to go ahead and put a little bit out there since we are looking for the super fine now so this should get interesting you see there are very different they're very different material there and I think what do I want to do here hold on yeah, we're gonna we're gonna use a pour off on this one because I'm y'all know I like to keep my stuff original. So once that once that settles and uh, the silt drops off, I'll pour most of that off and still keep the basically pour that through the kitchen strainer to catch most of that and then reintroduce it back to the pay dirt. And then still be able to keep that quality of that murky chocolate milk quality to it. And it also helps to keep your water cleaner so you can, uh, can see what you're doing. <laughs> Alright, well let's just see what... What we got in our first round here. I'm seeing some, looks like some pretty tiny, pretty tiny stuff hanging up there. Oh, and look at that. Nice, nice, n just needle thin, hairline, hair thin wire up there. Wow, oh, very nice. So yeah, it's definitely helped having uh back to the 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 prescription stuff that it's uh as far as not getting not losing you know breath talking or uh like I said having that pressure has made a, a world of difference. So hopefully it'll uh there won't be any side effects to it. I know some of that stuff causes you to increase your blood, raise your blood pressure, crap like that. But so far, I'm very happy with uh, with the results. So look at that, man! That is beautiful. Check that out. That, that thin long wire there some smaller pieces a little chunk there but just awesome <laughs> that is very cool and again there's nobody that offers anything like this are we getting that no it is not it is oh we might have actually pulled part of it so well, I guess it's still may I may it might not have actually been sometimes those wires get get twisted and you'll uh you'll actually have a couple of pieces that look like it's just one intertwined but oh. but yeah that one was just too uh too wide too much of a bend on it to go up the, the tube on that little tiny wire that's that's funny so, all right, well, a very cool start to this stuff. I'm going to go through and double check since we're dealing with this fine, fine stuff. Take it out in the sun. We'll be back. All right, we are, all right, we are down to the bottom of another one. And look at, look at these pieces of wire gold that are showing up in here. This is just incredible stuff. 
He said, anytime you can find wire gold like that, it is something very unique. Again, 90, over 90, like 95, 99% of all the gold in the world is microscopic gold. Just like that formation in Nevada that basically is the, the richest, you know, gold producing dirt in the world. Or long, longest producing mine or whatever it is. But they just recently in the last decade, for the first time ever, actually saw the gold that they were pulling out of the dirt there. They they knew it was there because they'd smelt it down and they would get, you know, this much gold per ton. But no one had ever actually seen any gold because it was all literally microscopic gold. And then they finally had, I think it might even be with the electron microscope, where they actually were able to see the gold that they've been taking out for, you know, decades of this rich... But again, so anytime you have, you know, placard gold or, uh, you know, nuggets, anything like that is is a rarity, even though it seems like it's out everywhere. You know, there's there's plenty of it around, but compared to the reality of what gold is, it is uh, it is ultra rare. And then you find the ultra rare <laughs> Categories among that that are even more, you know, even more rare, like this kind of stuff, where you've got these beautiful crystallized pieces that give you these unique and beautiful little pieces of art. I got the little boy underfoot. <laughs> He's moving. He's on the move. Hey, Gizmo. There, yeah, hi, big boy. But yeah, I know a lot of you guys are, are science nerds, so I don't know if you're following, but we're about to have the history-making American Eclipse coming up next month, August 8th. And uh, my closest place to see it in totality would be to go out to Texarkana. It's about five and a half hours drive from here to get there as opposed to closer to eight hours if I headed straight over across to uh, Houston to uh, get over to towards San Antonio Kerrville area where it's in the totality out there. But uh, I'm thinking about seeing get, get try to get my buddy to... I just don't really trust my van to, <laughs> to make it out there and back. So it's used to, I mean, I put like 3,000 miles on, less than 3,000 miles on it in the last four years being in town here. So I just don't have to drive far. And when I did, I actually rented a car. Like when I went to Dallas, I didn't take it. I, I rented a car and drove out there and back. So uh, it's, un, it's it's used to very light use. And uh, like I said, but... But yeah, it's uh some pretty a pretty unique event, and uh, cutting right the swath right through the middle of Texas, up to the northeast corner, and then uh, all the way up to Maine where it ends. But basically, about a hundred between a hundred and ten and a hundred and twenty mile wide, depending on where you're where you're seeing it. The Umbra. That actually is the the shady part where you can see the uh, the eclipse and you'll see the the corona and the uh, I forget there the beads there's named after somebody that first saw them the, the beads of light that uh just before the eclipse the totality where you can actually see the variations on the surface of the moon mountains valleys breaks up the beams of light as it disappears around the edge just before it hits the the diamond ring phenomenon where it looks like a you know a goal, the last speck of light before it goes into totality but uh and then whenever you once it's once it's in totality you get to I plan on taking the like the white whiteboard and put down where it looks like where you can see the the lines looks like snakes swimming up back and you know up and down 
from the shadows of the uh, effects in the atmosphere coming through. And then you've also got the, like the leaves of the trees. Whenever you look with the light that's penetrating through the leaves of the trees in totality, all looks like, uh, or as it's building up, you can see it'll look like little half moon shapes as the moon is covering it up. But any number of very, very cool phenomena on the 360-degree horizon, you know, where you usually see your sunset to the west during the eclipse, you can look 360 degrees around and it's like one, one giant sunset around you. So, but again, the people just say once you've, if you've ever, you know, that it's life-changing to actually see this cosmic ballet in, in action so yeah for and and the fact that it'll be 20 years i think before the next one like this but it'll be in 370 something years before it's back in this the same you know path because it basically has to make the it's all you know it's always different the last one came across from a different totally different angle that we did at the beginning of, was it this last year? Which everyone I did the video on out here where we were, and even if I stayed here and watched it now, we'd we'd see ninety percent totality from Louisiana. So it would still be a pretty cool. Look at that! That is our fine, fine stuff there. <laughs> like I said, fine enough to be recoverable, but so there's some there's still some tiny, tiny stuff mixed in there too. But it's uh, it's not an impossible recovery like some of that like some of his stuff is on that black diamond. So just that is very awesome. Where's the pot? We've been using the squirter here. I just I I use that all the time when I started controlling dirt, you know, to working the pans. And now since you've been once you've been doing it for so long, you know, you really don't need that. You you basically run and use your, your snuffer bottle or manipulate the stuff without the squirt bottle. But it is a handy, especially when you're starting out, it's definitely a handy tool to have for controlling your material and moving stuff out of the way to get your gold. And kind of like that, I just did add clear water to it so you're not just sucking up more silt than you absolutely have to every time. But... So yeah, man, I think that would be, I'm thinking about, but if I go out there, I'll definitely be doing a live stream from Texas in Texarkana for then they're saying Texas expecting, you know, like, you know, I don't know, 40 million, 40 something million people to, to show up in the thing. Oh, hold on a second. There's my buddy. How's it going, Ben? All right. Uh, getting gold, getting over here, getting some gold. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're down to the the end of this one. And actually, I had, I had done this one with Ben here just to show him what, what, what I was getting out of this one. And look at that wire. And just, li just listen to this. Get it up. Just listen to this. Hear that? That little, that little wire piece of gold right there. Makes a nice, <laughs> nice tick. So it's it's it, again, it's not fine wispy stuff. It's it's some substantial gold in these fucking wires. So that's awesome. But yeah, I I, I handed it to him to look at, it, and first thing he does is like he's holding it between his fingers. I said, don't don't you know don't squeeze it. Oh, I'm just raw. I'm just feeling because he's the one that y'all recall the first big nugget I had. He put his mouth and bit it. <laughs> I'm like, no, you dumbass, don't we bite, you know? Just because that's what, that's what they used to do back in the day for gold. Like, yeah, dude. So yeah, I'm always, uh, and this is the gold, this is the gold guy, the jeweler. But yeah, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't deal with gold like this. So, very, there's my boy making a, making a, an appearance. Hey, Hurricane. Yep, and again, he and Gizmo are their buds. Yeah, he's Gizmo's friends with all of them. He's uh, he thinks he's a cat. 
he's the cat dog so yeah very nice though but to get a, a tick like that out of a piece of wire gold is pretty uh that's pretty damn cool and so we are down to the the end I would imagine we're going to have a little bit of concentration of some fine stuff caught up in this. So there we go. A nice wrap up with some fine, fine, tiny stuff. Little teeny weenies. And you can still see some tiny wires, little wires showing up in there. All right. Well, let's just back her on out of there and see what we see what we got. This is what the bottles are best for, is for rinsing this stuff out. Although you can, you know, suck it up and give it the shake and all that. But it's, it is, it is good to have a, sometimes, especially with that fine stuff where it wants to really cling inside. And there we go. And. Just that picture right there is pretty. When you look at the, the variety of gold. All right, let's. All right, refilled my bottle. I always add a little of the, the jet dry to the squirt bottle as well, so you're not diluting, especially when you got flower gold. You don't want fresh clean water in there for it to be able to lift up and float so we do that to keep it keep it down so again we've got some very interesting pieces here that I'm going to have to do more again that Certainly has a, a golden look to it, but it's so you can tell it looks like it looks like gold sand hardened. And when I squeezed the end of it there, kind of kind of pressured it. It bent, see? So I was able to put a bend in it. That's that's bizarre. <laughs> and then we've got our other piece here. Again, that I mean that could be a gold layer of rock looking, you know, color of rock on top of that. That's just when you put it next to that other piece. It actually looks more yellow. Than the piece that I just bent. Well, it's wet and sticking to my damn fingers here, damn it. But you can see on that one that it bent, it put a crack in it, which gold usually doesn't crack like that. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, they can see the rock looks more gold than that piece of gold. And if you put them next to the What is Gizmo doing down there? If you put them next to the other gold, that is the rock right there. That looks very much like the the wires and things that it is next to. So I don't know. It's uh, hopefully if uh, Mike Mike might be in the in the uh, chat for this one. Give us a little insight on what I might be looking at there. We still got a little bit of stuff to wash down. But it's not a... So yeah, that is a very... 
Gizmo, what's wrong, baby? A very awesome bag of gold to have to be able to get. So hopefully he will be able to put this together, get his material, and and offer this up because very nice. And again, you can see that fine, fine gold. <laughs> Makes it fun. Right, we're going to leave our rock. Like then you can see how that's that gold is just stuck in there to the side. And we will just add all of it in and we'll figure it out in the house. Once we're dried up, I guess I should say that yes, even the, that Mike, uh, Mike is Gold Nugget Sales is one of the few, very few. Damn, I can't. Those are not sucking up. Of the pay dirt providers that that I review, that actually knows who I am, but uh. Initially, he did not. He would still. I would only whenever I'd uh, I'd send him a message one time when he had started his new labels. He started because he wasn't always putting the labels on the back. Once he'd started uh, putting his labels on the back, and then make he you know put a little and a little personal message on there and shit. And uh, I'd asked him, you know, could you uh, you know, go by use by you gold guy because I try to I don't want my my real name out on the internet any more than I than than it gets. And I always try to tell people like when they email me if you've if you've contacted me before and it or PayPal or whatever, it's something that comes up and it'll actually show your real name. I always remind people just don't don't use my name whenever you're talking to me in chat or on the comments. Cause again I don't want necessarily youtube to know there's a house full of gold <laughs> sitting over and uh, any more any more detail than i've already given it out from like my hurricane videos and stuff gizmo what is wrong baby boy but mike is one that you've seen like i said from enough videos that he doesn't you know he knows a lot of number of us sorry about that that that, that uh, buy from him and uh he and there's never any kind of Oh, make it look good for the videos, make it look good for the customer type thing at all. He's, uh, uh, like I said, he will bend over backwards to accommodate just about anybody that wants to, to deal with him. Uh, if you've got a special request, you want a certain kind of gold you're looking for, or a, a nugget or something, even the pay dirt bags where he's offering them up, you can, uh, like I said, if there's, if there's a way that he can uh, make, do something to make you happy, he is always more than willing and very generous with his time and his uh, energies to do that. So that's, again, what makes him such an awesome company and, you know, my favorite for sure. And uh, like I said, you don't have to deal with him much before he's here. I know he's a lot of people holding with the same regard. It is, uh, you know, that's the, that is the main place to go. And now since we've had the, the uh, diminished availability of so many gold uh companies uh that paid her companies that were reliable over the last year or so uh it's even more more important to like i said know the know the good ones and to to make sure you uh support them and give them your business and uh like i said he's uh and then you also have gold nuggets for sale where he offers the you know the the other uh, you know specifically just gold nuggets and deals like that on that site but he also, you can get him, you know, he has gold nuggets and, and his pay dirts on uh, gold nuggets for sale, gold nugget sales. So, yes, as you can see, this is gold nugget sales is actually the official pay dirt company. So, all right, well, let's get this dried up. We'll take it in, take a look and see if I recovered everything. Of course, I'll go back through this and uh, double check for fines and uh, we'll be back. And just to show... I went through my tailings, and that is what eluded me, which is a pretty a pretty good little pile. Of course, it's zero 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 one <laughs> weight, but it's gold, and uh, it can get away from get away from you easily. So you want to always double check, and sometimes triple check your. 
your tailings, like I said, even on mine, I even go back through and check before I dump it. You know, I recheck it to make sure that there is no nothing slipping by. And just like on that one I just did, there's still a couple more little flakes that it carried down. So when you're dealing with the fine gold, the wire gold, yeah, usually a minimum of two to three times you want to go through your material because those little pieces, no matter how thorough you are, it's just a lot easier for them to slip on by you. And then that would be, uh, like I said, just back in the, back in your tailings. So now I think we can confidently say that we've got all of our gold. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything else popping, so. All right, well, now we'll head in. One last thing out here that's kind of surprising. I got to the bottom, went through my, my silt I was pouring off. And this was, look how thick that is. That's what was poured off that was suspended in the water in the pan whenever, before I did the, the, before I did the panning. So that's even, even with the, like I said, the, the stratification, that much silt will stay suspended in the water of this thick stuff. Of course, there's no, uh, there's no gold that was carried in with it. It should be. Should be thin enough, I mean, you know, heavy enough that the this stuff would not carry gold with it in the, in suspension of the water. But yeah, when you saw me pouring off that chocolate milk, that's what it settled into was that thick layer of, you know, a, a, a sizable amount of, of material that's just held, held in the water. So, and then there's our, there's all of our organics that are still, were poured off of that. So we'll... Like I said, work that out, let this fall, pour it all off, dry it up, and return it to its original condition. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting to see too, that, that you don't realize how much is suspended in this stuff until you see something like that. Well, so I went around and hit the mailbox with Gizmo before we went in, and to my surprise, I had a, a golden package. Look, at check out that, how beautiful that envelope is out here. I mean, it is just just blazing in the sun. And uh, so, yeah, I'd gotten in. It is a new, a new seller for me. I've not tried before, but I think you've seen him before. Uh, this is one I actually he 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 saw my name. I think he's got the name of my channel because for some reason, uh, uh, PayPal put my name on there instead of my Buy You Gold guy. But RJ's Pay Dirt. As I said, I'm looking for. Uh, uh, something, an alternative for you guys that's not a, uh, you know, 50 or $60 a bag if you wanted to try to get in some pay dirt and uh, experiment and learn uh, some stuff. It comes a little vial there and a bag. Of dirt. This is a gem and gold bag, and you can see we've already got some very nice some copper and some stuff showing through there. This is $25 postage paid. So we will see... Uh, how it goes, and we, we might find us a new uh, a new Lynch. Like I said, Lynch was eighteen dollars, but it was, you also had to pay that eleven dollars postage on it, so that put it up close to thirty dollars. Anytime you bought a bag of Lynch, and you got point you know one nine to point two zero grams. So uh, we will see. But again, just the uh, <laughs> I, I think that that envelope's worth worth more than that just to just to keep in those in stock. That's not a cheap envelope, so. Very cool. We'll be interested to see. That's what we'll be doing. That'll be next week's uh, next week's video. Uh, something new and uh, some, some cool stuff it looked like. All right. You can just see it looks a lot finer in this pan than it did in the other, in the green pan. So we've got that. There's our, there's our questionable piece there. It looks, looks like gold. There's our other piece. It's our rock. <clears throat> That kind of looks like gold, but we know it's supposed to be a gram in this fat in this of this weight in here. So I'm thinking we'll uh, 
we should be we should be significantly over if these are not like that piece right there i just like i said it just has that look a very gold look even side by side on that thin layer on top of the rock but we're going to set it to the side for the moment same thing this big it's got a curve in it now where I bend it and you can see it's got that little crack right there where I bend it but does that not look like you know gold if it's got a little bit of malleability to it I would not think that that is what is this wet here I would not think that that would be you know that pyrite and things of that nature just don't do that Gold does that, <laughs> so, but I've never seen gold mixed with other things that would, other than, you know, other than gold myself. Certainly, like I said, not like some kind of a, a conglomerate or a, uh, you know, a, a sandstone type mixture of particles that make up a you know, a chunk, a piece of gold. So let's go ahead. We'll see what it comes out to. If that's, if it, if it weighs over that weight, we'll know that none of this, that that's not, that that's got to be something else. So there we go, 0 0.97, 0 0.98. And if we add, like I said, our little layer right there, that's way over. That's 102. And normally his stuff is, is, is about 103 to 105 on a gram, so that's right where we should be. So I guess that is... That must be a, uh, a, a like a piece of, of, of a, a piece with a layer that fine layer of gold on top of it, which is very unique. But uh, yeah, just some stuff that I have not seen before. <laughs> so that's that is very cool. And then you've got those awesome big wires. I really was thinking that 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 these that those pieces weren't going to be part of this that because just those wires, as heavy as those were, coming across would were were going to make up more than the the weight for a you know to be a gram. But yeah, when you look at those and then that fine stuff in with that on top of that, but let's see if we can get a better. Yeah, crystallized wire and fine gold. And then our piece there, you can see where it's got the the discoloring showing off the, the highlights of the character on it. And when you flip it over, if I can get it to flip over. And it's, it's hard to handle this tiny stuff. Let me see, I got a little bit on my finger. It's stuck. Now I've lost it. Where'd it go? There it is. I think that's still the same side we were looking at before. There we go. Then that's the other side. Like I said, a, a very, very cool pattern that comes through on that. When you, when you zoom in... Just check that out. <laughs> like I said, some unique, some very unique stuff. And there's our piece with the layer on it, the very thin layer. And then there's our our unusual. Like I said, that's just very unique. So awesome. Mike, can't thank you enough. Again, just the generosity of uh of gold nugget sales and the way uh 
you know, treats all of his customers. And, uh, he said, it's, uh, it's not, there's never any favoritism with this stuff. You're what you see us getting that when he, you know, that, that, that we interact with him, like I said, on a different, you know, different level than you do on most gold, gold companies that we deal with or would show and, uh, try to stay, you know, make sure that it's, that we're non-biased and have on here. But yeah, the, uh, that are wanting to, there's a number of companies right now that are out there, especially on your Amazons and your Ebays that are, uh, just blatant ripoffs and, uh, don't, they'll, they'll get what they can as much as they can off of you. And then you'll, uh, you know, you'll, you, when you try to get satisfaction on it, they just, enough people go after them, they shut down and start a new one. So they don't care. YouTube doesn't care. Amazon doesn't care. Uh, you know, as long as they're, as long as they're getting their percentage out of it, they'll let you get ripped off. So just be aware of that. Look at that. There's that awesome spire piece there. <laughs> so again, this is, I'm just sitting here with it zoomed in on my camera, checking it out. There's a piece that broke off of that. That's one that, that, that came off when I broke it the first time bending it. So I said, very unique. And, uh, Oh, like I said, hopefully this will be uh this will be something we'll have available to us. Cause I would definitely get another bag of this to add to this collection. Well, all right. Well, I'm here with my here's my little mama, little troublemaker. I'm gonna try to hang on to those last two little ones of hers. Gizmo's going crazy down here, not getting his attention, so let's get him up here to say bye-bye. Yes, you sweet boy. And uh as this is a no frills, I'm going to try to get this one out, edit as quick as I can, see if we can get it posted for tonight on time. If uh, I'll leave a, I'll leave a, if you see a comment come up in the community, you'll know I'm, uh, I'll be redirecting it for a later, later time. But at any rate, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, congratulations again to our uh, winners from our uh, 1,000 subscriber Guess the Weight giveaway, which was, uh, uh, God damn, was it Gold Pen? Sorry, dude, I can't remember your name. Uh, Gold Pan Suntan, New Mexico, who won first place. The, uh, the Bayou Gold Guy bottle. Then we had Patrick Walsh, who won the awesome uh, Banshee Mining Pay Dirt bag, get one grand bag. And then uh, GS Prospecting, who got the Mr. Minix prize of the silver on uh, third place. So thank you all again so much. Thank you to uh, uh, Julie and Mr. Minix. For uh, support and for uh, the awesome uh, um, prizes that you added to the to the giveaway, so thank you for that again, and to all of you for taking part in it. So if you're still hanging on here and made it this far, if you have not yet done so, I'd appreciate you hitting that subscribe button to the channel, ring the bell, you'll uh, know whenever these pop up. Uh, we're going to be trying uh, something new coming up. I got the the Gordon Ramsay's fish, uh, I mean uh, crab cakes. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna test the Gordon Ramsay crab case because if it's close to what the other stuff was, I'm looking forward to them. But we will see, and uh, looking forward to our our shiny gold bag next week. RJ, that was uh, as we got some. That was a very quick service already. I'm happy with that uh, for ordering and getting it received. So uh, till the next time, then once again, thank you so much to Gold Nugget Sales. Buy you gold guy here, telling you all take care of each other. And peace out, my friends, and uh, keep looking for that gold. No music. And we don't have time to edit before we gotta have we gotta have dinner before we do any editing, because we do this for five or six times a day now, We're trying to trying to get a little bit of. He's getting where he see he takes a little actually actually drinks a little bit sometimes. And then he bites down on the paper towel. <laughs> but yeah, it's got the... He's actually taking some, though. The problem with them whenever they're this small and they're... When they're having this kind of trouble is a kitten, a tiny, a new kitten. A lot of times it's going to... Even if I can get him to make it, he may have other issues as he gets older. Just because it's it's kind of nature's way of, of thinning them out is to, you know, 
the ones that aren't strong enough to make it. Those my other two little sweeties there. I don't know what what happened with them. They were there. You know, he's or she. I don't know. It's hard to tell when you look at their little little spot down there. I think I think that's a little girl because she's got the she's got the little markings on her belly like she might be a little bit of a calico, but. Again, I can't get that eye to stay open. I get the warm paper towel on it. And then whenever I'm doing this, I'm always basically licking my finger and putting the saliva on it just to try to... She'll open it sometimes. You can see it open it up and she'll she'll be looking through it. Look at that little face. Now, you can't give up on that. You can't just give up on that. There you go. There you go. Oh, it always makes me so happy when I see her actually... Yeah, now you're starting to look at her. That's that's some of the most that she takes at a time right there. Good girl. That's so good, little girl. Yeah, you should be doing this, mommy. But I sit there, I'll have her I'll pr I'll hold her up there and try to and put her on a nipple and she just she does it. She'll lay on top of it, but she won't latch on. But yeah, that was getting some good you were getting some good drinking there. Here, have some more. I kept thinking she was going to get used to, you know, get familiar with that little nipple in her mouth and feeling the, because I heat it, I heat it up so it's warm. And uh, there you go. Come on, sweetie pie. You were doing so good. You were doing so good. There we go. There we go. When he gets it, when she gets that in her mouth a little bit and kind of chew, wants to chew on it. But that's it. He's just, I've been just doing it a drip, a drop at a time, just trying to, I mean, you can see her skin's just hanging off her little bones. She's just so, she's just so malnutrition compared to what she should be. I'm surprised, I don't know, I don't know how she's made it this far. She had to have been eating. Why, why she stopped eating off the nipple? Because there's no way she would still be alive. Look at you go. There you go. It's so good. <laughs> there's no way she'd still be alive if she hadn't been eating up till this point. So whatever. Uh, yeah, you need to lick her more too. And then the mother comes through and will lick. I, when I get done, I always try to rub on it because that and that prompts them to 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 use the bathroom to 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 to, to pee or to. You know, you got to watch, you want to watch for vomiting or for any diarrhea when you're giving him formula. And he hasn't been, she hasn't been doing any of that. But that little eye, that little one eye. I just don't know what. And the other babies all seem to have that same affliction, something with their eyes. So I just don't know what, what's going on about that. You can see it's kind of opening a little bit. So come on, baby pies. But this is what we do. <laughs> We've been doing this for a while. This week it's kind of kind of taking up some time, but uh, we've had rain. And I haven't I've had hadn't had any work that needed to specifically be done this week that I was worried about. So I've just been uh been off the grid dealing with dealing with these. And like I said, I was already very sad having to. Having to bury two of my little babies this week, I don't want to do a third. So we're we're fighting for this one. Yes. So wish us luck. Then that little little eye kind of kind of opens up sometimes. <laughs> well, and then I got the I got the boy in, in, in his in his support position, <laughs> and Mama. Meanwhile, the other little baby, she's over there in the corner. Keep the heating pad on the box to keep. What are you? What are you going on about? Huh? What's your deal about? Yeah, you see, we got we got a little baby we're working on here. He's, he always got to come stick his nose on it and check it out. So, so there we go. All right, my other big boy, my helper. So wish us luck with uh, our little sweetie pie here. And God forbid something happens, I'm gonna really be upset. <laughs> putting in this much time on this when I'm getting I'm getting attached here. I mean, it's still going to go to a new home for sure. We we are we are at maximum occupancy here at the Bayou Gold Guy house, but 
we can still find it a good little home before it's over. If it'll just, if it'll just hang on and get to the point where I can start getting it to eat some dry food or get some, you know, some solid food, some wet food in it. And, uh, that's still a couple of weeks away though. So we're going to have to see how this, how this plays out. So till next time, everyone take care. Wish us luck.